In this video we are going to take a look at number systems with radix r representation. The goals that we have are to look at the properties of decimal number representation, expand this to number representation with a base of radix r, more general than just uh, decimal, for example r equal to 2 or r equal to 16. And we also want to compute the value of numbers in different um, representations, for example, binary numbers or hexadecimal numbers. Let's consider the decimal number that is shown here, and 10, uh, 2967. Okay, we, say, we of course call this 2967, which is written out here. And we say that the, that the value of this number is 2967. Mathematically, we would write that V of 2967, that value of that number, is equal to 2 times 10 to the 3, plus 9 times 10 squared, plus 6 times 10 to the 1, plus 7 times 10 to the 0. So we're basically um, associating with this number here uh, a value of 0 for the exponent of 10, a value of 1 for the exponent of 10 for this position, a value of 2 for this position for the exponent of 10, and a value of 3 here. So of course because we have for this position an exponent of 3, we would have 10 to the 3, and so we would call this 2 here as representing 2000. Okay, the value of an arbitrary decimal number, n10 equal to dk minus 1, dk minus 2, all the way to down to d1 and d0, where each of the, the d's in here, the dk's, is uh, a digit between 0 and 9, so 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., up to 9. And the value we compute by saying uh, the value of this n10 and the subscript 10, of course, stands for decimal, is equal to k equal to 0 up to some capital K minus 1, where capital K is the number of digits that we have here. So this is capital K wide. And so we will take the summation k equal to 0 up to capital K minus 1 of d sub k, each of those individual digits there, times 10 to the k. And we, in the way this is formulated here, we actually start at the right end and take d0 times 10 to the 0 plus d1 times 10 to the 1 and so forth up to d sub k minus 1 times 10 to the capital K minus 1. And of course, for decimal numbers, we call the d zeros ones, the d ones we call tens, uh, d two we call the hundreds, d three the thousands, etc. And we also talk about d zero, the rightmost um, digit here, as being the least significant digit. So we call this the LSD. And then we call d sub k minus 1, capital K minus 1, um, the most significant digit. So this one over here is what we call the MSD. Now, nothing really prevents us from making this more general and saying that instead of 10 for the base or the radix, we could use some other number, r as it is called here. And then we have a number, capital N sub R, which is N sub K minus 1, N sub K minus 2, etc., all the way down to N1 and N0. And we would again have here the least significant digit, and over here the most significant digit for this particular number representation. So we think now of using a, a radix r basis. So each of those individual digits here is uh, from the set 0, 1, 2 up to r, r minus 1. 
and would be computed then the value would then be computed as v of n sub r as being k equal to zero up to capital k minus one uh, of n sub k times r to the k so r equal to 10 would be the decimal system a general system could have another r for example for binary we use r equal to 2 And then in a binary system, the n sub k's could only just be in 0 and 1. Okay, another thing that we observe here is that for a capital K digit number, so again, this whole thing here is capital K wide, like this. So for a capital K digit number in radix R representation, we can have R different values in K positions. So each of those capital K positions could go, could be 0, 1, 2 up to R minus 1, 0, 1, 2 up to R minus 1 and so forth. And so all together, we're going to have R to the capital K possible distinct values that the value of this number can, could take on. Okay, so as I mentioned, besides r equal to 10, the decimal system, some common values for r are 2, uh, 3, 8, and 16. And we call it, when r is equal to 2, we call it the binary number system. When r is equal to 3, it's a ternary uh, number system or representation. When it's 8, it's an octal representation. And when it's 16, it's called a hexadecimal representation. So let's take a look at a few examples here. We can take the decimal number n10 equal to 213, which has a value of v of 213 equal to 213 because we express the value in terms of the decimal number. And we would now like to express that decimal value of 213 in different number systems, like in the binary system, r equal to 2. And it turns out that uh, n sub 2, the binary representation of 213, is 11010101. One, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And in order to compute the value of that in decimal, we go and we think of this position here as being 2 to the 0, and then 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6, and 2 to the 7. Okay, so we only need to add up those uh, powers of 2 where the digit is equal to 1. So we have 2 to the 7 from the leftmost one, and then for binary this would be called the most significant bit, MSB. And the one over here would be called the LSB, the least significant bit. Okay, so we start with the most significant bit, which is a 1, and we have uh, 2 to the 7 from there, so that's 128, and then the next one, 2 to the 6, uh, is 64, then we don't have 2 to the 5, but we have 2 to the 4, so that's 16. And then no 2 to the, to the 3, but 2 to the 2, which is 4. And no 2 to the 1, but 2 to the 0, which is 1. So we get 128 plus 64, that's 192, plus 16 plus 4 plus 1. So 16 plus 4 is 20, 192 plus 20 is 212, plus 1 is equal to 213. And so we get the decimal value of this binary number 11010101. If we do this in ternary, just for the fun of it, um, the number n sub 3 would be then equal to 2, to 2, 1, 2, 2, 0. And so again, we use the powers of 3 now. So we have um, powers of 3 to the 0. That thing lets me write here. I guess it doesn't want. Okay, so let's try once more. Two to the, no, three to the three. 
or 3 to the 0, and then 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2, 3 to the 3, and 3 to the 4. So we have uh, now digits 0, 1, and 2, if you are operating with the ternary number system. And the, the first uh, digit here, the most significant digit, is 2 times 3 to the 4. So that's this, this one here. And then we have 1 times 3 to the 3, 2 times 3 squared, uh, plus 2 times 3 to the 1, and 3 to the 0 is 0, so we do not write anything for it. So we get 2 times 81, plus 1 times 27, plus 2 times 9, plus 2 times 3, and that turns out again to be equal to 213. If we do this for octal numbers, the uh, basis or radix is now 8, and we have n sub 8, then we put in uh, or we obtain 325 three, for the rep octal representation of our number, of our decimal number 213. And we can check here the value of this n8. We have 3 times 8 squared because we have here position 0, position 1, and position 2. 3 times 8 squared plus 2 times 8 to the 1 plus 5 times 8 to the 0. So that's 3 times 64 plus 2 times 8 plus 5. And that's again 213. So that's in decimal again, whereas this is in octal. OK, and then hexadecimal. Now r is equal to 16. So n sub 16 uh, turns out to be equal to d5. And the d might surprise you here somewhat. Uh, that's, of course, not uh, what we are usually referred to as a numerical digit. But the convention for hexadecimal, because we run out of digits, because we need 16 of them, we use just 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. And then after 9, we're using A. So A stands for 10. And then B, that stands for 11. C, that stands for 12. D, that stands for 13. E stands for 14. And F stands for 15. Okay, and so we can check again. So D, which we have here, that is 13 times 16 to the 1. So we have here position 0 and position 1. So 13 times 16 to the 1 plus 5 times 16 to the 0. So 13 times 16, that would be 160 plus 48. So that's 208 plus 5, that's again 213.